you guys and gals, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something about Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir, Lee's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Considering how close to tragedy she is, it's shocking just how well she's adjusting. The things got back for us, it never really went back to normal. My parents still avoid talking about it and are rarely home. I've grown to despise that house. There's so many happy memories, but I can't enjoy them over the suffocating atmosphere. Who did you lose? Huh? You have that same distant look my dad gets sometimes. I'd recognize that anywhere. Don't worry, I won't tell Lee or the others. It'll be between the two of us. My throat tightens and my eyes scan around the garden. The only other occupant that we saw that I, we saw have already moved on and disappeared from sight. It's just the two of us in here. It isn't super private though. There's a building directly adjacent and through the windows we can see patients and staff walking past so they can see us just as well. No one looks should be paying any mind to the two of us, even if the occasional person peeks over towards us. It's about as solitary as I'm going to get at a public place, I suppose. When I was in middle school, my, my brother died. He, uh, killed himself. My parents were out of town that weekend, and I found him in our attic. Oh, Wallace, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It was a while ago. But despite my words and how much I was trying, I could feel my hands starting to shake. I never talked to anyone about this outside of my parents. It just wasn't something I wanted to dwell in. It was part of the reason I was so excited for college. I could finally put it behind me, but it feels like it's always haunting me like a ghost hellbent on ruining my life. Wallace? Everywhere I go, I see remnants of my time with him. It hurts, and I'm not sure what to do about it. You don't have to do anything about it. There's no right way to handle anything like this. If I find it out, I'll let you know. Me and my dad might have come to an understanding, but I still miss her every day. I know he does too. Some days are easier than others. Some just feel suffocating. This conversation turned out a lot heavier than I expected when I, le when I left Lee's house today. Despite everything, it feels relieving to talk about this as silly as it sounds. But now that brings my mind back to, ex to where exactly we are. Why are we at a hospital? You made it sound like you like you despise the place. I expected her to pull her hand away or tense up, but she just takes a deep breath like she's clearing her thoughts. No matter how touchy the subject is, she never gets aggressive. Wish I had her patience. I've always hated hospitals. Well, that's not true. When I was a little girl, I used to always look up to doctors. They seemed so cool. It was their job to, jobs to save people. She's no longer focusing on me at all. Instead, her eyes are following whoever is walking down the Garden View corridor. None of them pay us any mind, but it's hard to not fall into a trance watching them walk by. But... When they failed to save my mom, I felt such resentment towards them. I hated them more than anything else. I'm still angry. I had such an issue letting go. But I've been trying to do better, and I'm and I think making amends is a good thing. <sighs> All right. Some of the staff here still recognize me from when I used to visit. It's strange. I used to say such abusive things towards them, but they never deserved it. They're always so nice, and after we pulled the plug, they checked up on me and my dad to see if we were doing good. It was just a call, but it was the wake-up call I needed. I avoided answering them at first, but months later I wanted to tell them to leave us alone. But they made sure that everything was okay and even recommended one of their friends if we needed any help. My dad and I still visit her every month. That sounds amazing. She wipes her eyes that have been growing progressively glossier. She's on the brink of tears, but that wonderful smile never leaves her face. They're great. I... I wasn't sure what I wanted to do when I came to college, and I didn't expect to find out until next year, but I think I want to do something around here. I don't know what yet, but I'll find out. Oh. Yeah. Whoa. There's no conversation after that. Lily cleans herself up, but I make sure... Make sure... But I make sure she has my support the entire time. She doesn't let me fret over her too much, and I'm, re I'm relegated to just rubbing her back. There you go again, being the sweetest guy I've, me I've ever met. That can't be true. You'd be surprised. High school boys aren't going to win any prizes with girls, and the only notable things I've met, guys I've met here so far is our group, and this is our little secret, but you're my favorite. She whispers that into my ear before wrapping her arms around me in a big hug. There's a lot of laughing, and it's clear that the darker mood is long past. Even after we pull away, though, one of her arms still hangs around my neck. We're both still smiling. I'm gonna turn the music down a little bit more, y'all, because last video I got hit with a copyright sharing thing, so... Alright. I think I... You think I've gotten used to physical affection, but I've never really experienced this outside of family. No need to tell me. No, no need to tell me your fave. I know that Lee's got your attention. What? 
No need to speak. I already know. Me and Oscar were chatting about it all night. It was mostly to distract from last night, but it doesn't mean the gossip wasn't good, so expect him to harass you soon. Oh joy, that's definitely going to be a conversation I'm not looking forward to. Well, I'm sure the chat itself will be fun, but I'm not looking forward to the consequences of it. Hey, Wallace, I know we just moved past all the heavy stuff, but I wanted to say, I have the feeling there's more to the story with your brother than you're telling me. My mouth instantly feels dry and I'm left stunned. I wasn't prepared for this at all. She must have expected this reaction because her eyes have taken a softer, more, more empathetic tone. I don't want you to tell me. I will admit, I don't think I'm, the be I'm in the best headspace for it, but I want you to talk to someone about it when you feel ready. He promised me that? Okay, yeah. I think I can do that. Good. Now, speaking of Lee... A phone buzzes between the two of us, leading to, the, leading to the canine giving a giggle before finally shuffling some distance between us. I'd completely forgotten just how close we'd been sitting for nearly the entire time. Second, y'all, let me uh, plug my other phone in. Alright, take a little coffee break. Hmm. Alrighty. Like she summoned him, the messages from Lee. I've already been ta talking to Lily for nearly an hour. Lee must be free to go visit that shelter that he found yesterday. He mentioned it during breakfast, and it sounded like Charlie wanted to come along, too. I'm not quite sure why, but she sounded almost excited to go there. Regardless, the message, like usual, split, split across multiple different batches. Hey, kid. Where you are? Where are you right now? I'll finish my shift soon. Charlie should be finished by the time we get there. Well, now, where are you three going? Lily shamelessly reading my messages, but I don't really mind. We're just talking about him, and I feel comfortable letting her know everything. Uh, Lily wanted to meet up at the hospital. I'll let you know whenever, whenever you're free. Ooh, that might not have that might not have been the best idea, huh? As if she just predicted the future, my phone flares up with messages coming in one after another. I'm not even able to read any of them before they're replaced by another. I'm forced to scroll back up to the message I just sent and have somewhere to st and have somewhere to start. Shit! Is everything okay? Did something happen to her? Do you need me to come? I can't let the others know. The messages go on for another six more before he finally relents and gives me time to reply. There's a big, this is a big misunderstanding. We're fine. She just wanted to visit for the garden. Uh, we're just talking. We should be finished up soon. Uh, where do you want to meet up? I expect a fast reply like before, but there's a sizable break between this one and the last. He's still busy at work. Maybe I should be messaging him until he finishes. But before long, he gives a single reply. Meet me here at Rocco's garage. That's all. There's no clarification on what exactly Rocco's garage actually is. I'm about to ask when Lily interrupts me. Oh, I know that place. It's a mechanic shop that my dad goes to. I wonder if I've seen Lee there before. I never really paid attention to any any of the times he brought me. Really? Yeah, it's not too bad. So that's where he works. I'm not surprised. He seems like the hands-on kind of guy. Speaking of, how did last night go? We spent so long talking about me, you were the one who needed company. Are you doing okay? Even though she doesn't have any accusation or hints of shame in her voice, I can't stop the blood from rushing to my face. Even Lily is trying to baby me. I'm doing a lot better. It was relaxing, and Charlie was really welcoming. Though she does get a little pushy sometimes, but her energy was a nice distraction. So I heard. Oscar was messaging about this little little voice call with her. Apparently you and Lee were getting pretty close. No, we were just teasing him and he left his left to his room. I was just giving him some company and happened to walk on him shirtless. Nothing happened. Oh, you walked in on him shirtless? I never heard anything about that. I was just told you were having a good time. She bursts out in a series of giggles and guffaws that leaves me gaping. Of course. How would they know I walked in on him changing? No one saw that but me. Oh, God, please don't tell anyone about that, especially Oscar. There's no way he won't take that the wrong way. I think you don't give him enough credit. He was really worried about you yesterday, even if he doesn't show it. We all were. Like our previous conversation never happened, she's back to her cheerful self as she gently bumps her shoulder into mine in an attempt to get the reaction out of me. She succeeds because I can't stop a smile from intruding onto my lips. Thanks. Yesterday was really scary. It was. Everyone was so dismissive of it, but I'm not so sure. You're not? No. Things were too specific to be a fever dream or a drug trip. I knew things only I would know and tried not to think about and, and tried not to think about, about like these. She holds up the bouquet of beautiful blue forget-me-nots again. The way she's looking at them is different from before. It's not mournful, but serene. But I meant what I said the other day. I don't think we should think too much about it. It's not like we can do anything about it. It's happened and it's happened and it's over. Shouldn't we be worried about it, though? Should we really be so, you know, chill about it? 
She just shrugs, but when she notices my confusion, my confused expression, she turns in her seat so she's fully facing me with her legs crossed beneath her. She begins her she begins her claws up to pat down my head fur that I didn't even realize had gotten frazzled. Don't stress yourself out. Yes, it could have been bad, but there's a good chance that whatever happened won't ever happen again. If it does, we'll worry about it then, okay? I'm only able to give, a, give it a nod and let her continue grooming me. It's hard to complain about it, both what she's doing and what she's saying. It feels great. As much as I don't want to admit it, she's right. There's no point worrying about it, realistically. What am I going to do? Look up strange shared dreams? They'll just bring up equally weird but unhelpful results. But I still can't help but feel that, like there's something strange going on. Why did I find that page? I really wish I investigated as soon as I got home. But for now, she's right. Until I get the chance to check out that page again, I should stop stressing about it and focus on what's happening right now. So, you and Lee. Looks like you're head over heels for him. Can't say I expected that. Huh? I mean, Oscar makes sense. He's a stud and Lucas is a cute little angry angel. I mean, I get it. Lee is one of the most handsome guys I've ever met. I just don't think he's, uh, he's many people's first pick. I think he's pretty great. He might come off as pretty scary, but he's one of the most caring people I've ever met, and, uh... Words fail me as I watch a smirk creep wider across her face and a predatory twinkle glimmer in her eyes. She's clearly got some ideas in her head that are only going to be problematic for me later. Well, if you want my advice, you're going to need to take the initiative with him. He's definitely into you, trust me. He just, he's just giving himself excuses as to why it, is a, a, why it is a, isn't appropriate. So you're going to need to convince him. How do I do that? Don't force it. Just be yourself, but when, thing, when the time is right, don't be afraid to put your foot forward, okay? I'm sure he'll respond well if you do. My mind flashes back to this morning, and I have to make sure there's no one around again before I lean forward to whisper into her large canine ears. She catches on fast and brings her head closer. Well, there was this moment this morning. Charlie told me to give him some attention after his shower and he'll want to show off. So I did, and he... And he and, uh, and he... I ended up feeling him up, and he helped. <sighs> Whoa, that doesn't sound like either of you. I didn't know what came over me, and it... Didn't seem like he did either. He ended up breaking it off, but he looked really into it. Despite it being a spicy little story with a lot of details left out, stuff that's only for my eyes and memories, she takes this information with a shocking seriousness. Well, this is news. Regardless, you should get going. You'll need to meet up with him soon, and I got to get going if I want to make it to my class at three. She picks up her bouquet of flowers and stops in thought before plucking a few out of them. I'm not given much chance to respond before she's given them to me. Give these to him as a present. He might not seem like it, but he. But I bet he's the type that likes flowers. Really? Are you sure? These are for your mother. I couldn't... Shush, don't stress about it. I'll tell her all about your little crush on him. She'll totally understand. Dad used to tell me how Mom loved to be a matchmaker when she was younger. She'd be glad that I had followed in her footsteps. I bet your brother would be proud of you, too. You sounded close. He'd want you to be happy. My throat constricts and I can feel a cocktail of emotions forming in my throat, cutting off all hope for a proper sentence. It takes all my focus to get a single word out. Thanks. Anytime. Now go get him. Keep the flirty to a minimum, though. You told me you were going to a shelter to get information on Helena. That's not exactly the best time for this kind of stuff. I wasn't planning to. She just gives me a giggle as she keeps she gets up to stand, grab my arm in the process to drag me up with her. Despite being shorter than me, she hoists me to my feet with ease. <laughs> looks like we both got people waiting for us. Yeah, looks like it's going to be a busy day. Hey, Wallace? Huh? Thanks for today. Don't sweat about it. This ended up helping me just as much. It gave me a lot to think about. Well, don't think too much. Keep an ear out for any messages from me. I'll hit you up after my class later. Alright. What is this? Oh. Okay. After what feels like nearly half an hour of walking, I finally arrive at Rocco's Garage. I wish Lily had given me a bit more of a warning when I set out that it was going to be on the outskirts of the city center. I mean, I should have guessed that the very middle of the town would be too busy and cramped to fit a car workshop, but a heads up would have been nice. But, I'm lucky it's only on the edge of the city center and not the edge of town. If I had to walk to the rural areas, it would have likely taken me hours. Next time, I'm taking the bus. I will say, after lingering around the busier areas of town, I appreciate the quieter parts of town more. I didn't realize how exhausting being constantly surrounded by people can be. Even my apartment is right next to a busy road. It's not to say that this area is completely dead. There's still a decent flow of cars, and I'm far from the only person on the sidewalk, but compared to the center of town, this is much more tolerable. I've never been to this specific area before, and it looks to be just as commercialized as the rest of the town. There isn't a residential building in sight, there's businesses everywhere. The places that catch my eye the most are an Asian grocery store and what looks to be a vintage camera store. 
While they'd be a fun visit in the future, my main focus is the large garage surrounded by empty cars. For a moment, I think they're selling them before I realize there's no prices on them. Either they're out of commission or they're for, per or they're for personal use. But even then, there's way too many cars for just a single team to work on. They must be something. They must be here for something else. Wait, right now, coffee time. Hmm. All right, rest of the coffee is gone. Let's do it. The open interior of the garage itself looks shockingly barren outside of a car with its raised hood obscuring whatever's behind it. Another lifted up into the air on a hoist with, with what looks like to be a large polar bear underneath and with two trays of tools in the corner. I expected there to be more around, but maybe there's more than more, there's more that I cannot see. And there seems to be a hole inside of the building that I cannot see from this angle. <laughs> there's both a front door to a receptionist desk and another in the garage itself that leads to some back room. I feel extremely out of place. The closer I get, the harder it gets to hear anything other than the mass cacophony of sounds of power tools being used. My ears might not be the most sensitive, but this still this still leaves them aching. Alright, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank y'all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our... Excuse me, thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome, we love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5 already. I love you all, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye